I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm totally with you. It was bad. Well, it was gangster. Ooh. really long. Yeah, yeah. I had it done on my knees and the um, um, Good morning, church. Good morning. I was glad when they said to me, come, let us go into the house of the Lord. Uh, my name is Carrie, and I am the pastor here at Epworth United Methodist Church, and it is a joy uh, to stand before you and welcome you into the worship space this morning. Uh, I do want to say, blessed are the flexible, for they shall not be bent out of shape, uh, and... Uh, a couple reasons for saying that. Uh, we've got, a, we've got a, a second team up in the production booth today, the uh, Chuck and Lisa and Caleb Bailey, uh, after um, Jim Perry and Ralph Summers both uh, pet tested for, for COVID. Um, so if you're feeling a little funny <laughs> uh, sometime during the week, it, it's worthwhile to, to take a test because we've got a couple people uh, that are, are affected with it right now. Thank you for uh, the folks who are stepping in to, to make things happen. We are still tweaking uh, the sound system um, and, uh, and such, so, so bear with us as, as we deal with that, uh, including the sound under the balcony uh, and maybe even the air conditioning. We're not sure, uh, but again, blessed are the flexible. Uh, there will be some announcements uh, later on. I do want to point out uh, right now that... Um, as you know, uh, over the past week, there have been devastating fires in Hawaii. Um, United Methodist Committee on Relief uh, is, is on their way. UMCOR is on their way from California to, to uh, Hawaii to uh, help uh, deal with the recovery there. And uh, UMCOR is, you can, you can make a donation to UMCOR anytime, uh, and 100% of that gift goes to the uh, the requested uh, need. So if you uh, wanted to write a check and put it in the offering plate, you can write it to Epworth and write UMCOR on the bottom. Uh, you can even write Hawaii Fires on the bottom, and, and that'll go for, for that need. So, good morning, and I'm going to turn it over to Bo. Good morning, church. Good morning. We're so glad to see all of you here, whether you're here in person or with us electronically. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Another beautiful day that the Lord has made. If you're able, please rise and let's sing the hymn of praise. Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing. <laughs> Oh, oh. 
for a thousand tongues to sing my great Redeemer's praise. The glories of my God and King, the triumphs of his grace. My gracious Master and my God, assist me to proclaim, to spread through all the earth abroad the honors of thy name. Jesus, the name that charms our fears and bids our sorrows cease. Tis music in the sinner's ears, tis life and health and peace. They are the devil. It happened. <laughs> <laughs> it's gone. Your new words are gone. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'll take I'll take the blame for that one. <laughs> I know, I know, right? I was looking for the switch, John, but I <laughs> <laughs> please join me in the call to worship. Oh Lord my God, in you I take refuge. Save me from all my pursuers and deliver me. Or like, or like a, lion, a lion, they, they will tear, tear me apart. apart. They, they will, will drag, drag me away, away with, with no, no one, one to, to rescue. rescue. Rise up, O Lord, in your anger. Lift yourself up against the fury of my enemies. Awake, Awake O my, my God. God. You have you appointed, appointed a judgment. judgment. The Lord judges the peoples. Judge, Judge me, me, O Lord, Lord according, according to, my to my righteousness, righteousness and, according and according to the integrity that is in me. See how the wicked conceive evil. They are pregnant with mischief. With mischief. They, bring they bring forth, forth lies. lies. They make a pit, digging it out, and fall into the hole that they have made. Their, their mischief, mischief returns, returns upon, upon their, their own heads, heads and, and on their, their own heads their violence descends. descends. I will give to the Lord the thanks due to his righteousness. And sing praise, and praise to the name, the name of, of the Lord, Lord the, most the Most High. Please join me, if you will, in the opening prayer. Eternal, Eternal God, God, the light of the, of the minds that, that know you, the joy of the hearts that love you, you and the strength of the wills that serve you, grant us so to know that we may truly love you, and so to love you, that we may truly serve you with service in perfect freedom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now, if you'll please stand, we'll do the uh, opening hymn. Here I am, Lord, number we, 593. We decided that we were standing too much. <laughs> One up and down won't hurt us.
The epistle lesson this morning is Romans chapter 10, verses 5 through 15. Moses writes concerning the righteousness that comes from the law, that the person who does these things will live by them. But the righteousness that comes from faith says, do not say in your heart, who will ascend into heaven? That is to bring Christ down. Or who will descend into the abyss? That is to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you on your lips and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one believes with the heart and so is justified, and one confesses with the mouth and so is saved. The scripture says, no one who believes in him will be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all and is generous to all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. But how are they to call on one in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in one of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone to proclaim him? And how are they to proclaim him unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. The children would join me on the steps, please. at everybody. Come on up. Oh my goodness. Look at all of you guys. Come on up. Sit down. Good job. Well, how is everybody this morning? Good? Really good or just a little good? Ooh. Just a little good, Briggs says. Okay, just a little good. Well, how many of you guys like to go swimming? Everybody? So much? Okay, so much. Well, I thought today I would go swimming. So, let's see. I brought all my stuff. Let's see what all I've got down in here. I have sunscreen. That's really important, isn't it, right? Because you don't want to get a sunburn. Um, oh, I might. Let me see what's way down in here. Oh, uh, let's see. My goggles. Because I want to know what's going to... They won't fit me? How do you know? <laughs> you just know. Okay. Okay. Well, I want to see what's going to chew on my toes if I'm going to be in that water. And let's see. I brought these. Let's see. Oh, goodness. Those don't fit you in. Oh, yes, they do. Look. They do fit me. <laughs> okay. Well, look here. I got my hat. Nobody will believe I'm putting that hat on my head, but I am. Oh, and I brought this pool noodle, too. You don't need other little babies, right? <laughs> you want to do this? Go ahead. <laughs> all right. Well, I'm all ready. Oh, oh, my sunglasses. I forgot. I, I want to be able to see when I'm outside. You can, you can see when you're like you're lucky. <laughs> okay, well, listen. Do I look like I'm ready to go swimming now? Okay, but there's only one problem. Guess what it is? I need one more of these, that's for sure. <laughs> but guess what, really? I don't know how to swim. And that's the truth. So, none of this stuff's going to do me any good. A huge pool float? Why'd you say huge? Well, anyway, none of the, it's more relaxing. Good, good comeback there. That's a good one. Well, I'm not going to need any of this stuff. Uh, no, I can't swim like a ducky, but I'm going to keep this pool noodle around just in case. But have you ever tried to walk on water? No. There's only one person that can, who can walk on water? 
Jesus, that's right. Well, I'm kind of like, what happens? I'm like a rock. What happens if you put the rock on the water? It sinks, it sinks and that's me. And if I do that, after, mis after Mr. Kevin stops laughing, he might come and save me, but it's debatable. But I'm telling you all this for a reason, because today in one of the Bible stories, did you know there were people who really did walk on water? The disciples were out of the boat in a lake, and there were some pretty big winds and waves coming up. An ice cube, okay. And then suddenly, in the middle of the night, they saw somebody walking on the water to them. They were really scared at first, but the person called out. Does anybody know who it might have been? Jesus, that's the right answer. And he said not to worry. Then Peter, who sometimes acts before he thinks, he asked Jesus if he could come to join him on the water. Jesus said yes to Peter. So he stepped out of the boat and began to walk on the waves. It must have suddenly occurred to Peter that this should not be happening. Because he suddenly looked down and he started to panic. Because he began to sink like that rock and called out to Jesus to save him. Jesus took Peter's hand and led him back to the boat. And soon, as they climbed in, the wind died down. Doesn't that seem kind of like a strange story? Who walks on water after all? Hmm, can you believe, can you believe enough that you could walk on water? I'm not going there. Because mm -mm. I will sink like the rock. Now, we can't believe enough to do anything on our own, can we? God's power allows us to do anything and everything we do. So Peter started to sink when he took his eyes off Jesus. And in our lives, when we start to sink spiritually and think that we can't do things on our own, what happens? We fail, don't we? Because we took our eyes off Jesus and we didn't focus. But when we fix our eyes on Jesus and we know that we will be safe, he has promised to protect us and provide for us. And when we pray and when we read our Bible and we go to church and we remember that God is near, we can take hope in his presence and his power. I can't swim much very easy without my oops, pool noodle, can I? Nope, I've got to have that thing. So if we can live much easier with Jesus to guide us always, right? Jesus will always keep us afloat. So what's going to happen if you take your eyes off Jesus and you don't focus? We're going to sink. We're going to sink and we're going to fail, right? So are we going to keep our eyes focused on Jesus? All right. And we're going to really believe, right? That's right. Well, let's say a little prayer. And I'm going to say the first line and then you guys repeat it after me, okay? Let's bow our heads. Dear God, thank you for rescuing us from the stormy seas of life. Help us to remember to trust in you for strength and power. Help us to keep our eyes and our hearts fixed on you. We can do nothing without you. Thank you for giving us strength. Thank you for giving us your love. We love you, dear God. In Jesus' name, amen. All righty, you can go back to your seats. Um, and uh, one of the, the news things that we have over the past week is that um, Mickey Murphy uh, had a, a leg infection for the last couple of weeks uh, ever since uh, the, her accident, um, and, and she had to have her uh, right leg amputated at the knee. Um, so prayers for, for Mickey and family. She is, 
she is doing well. She is doing well uh, mentally, spiritually, and uh, on the way physically as well. What are some things that you would like to, to share with the congregation at this time? Um, somewhere where you may have seen God at work in your life in the, in the past week or so, uh, or a special petition that you might have. Um, I'll lift up once again the, the folks that uh, have uh, been affected by COVID recently. Uh, it's not gone. <laughs> we think it's gone. Uh, we're, we're living like it's gone, but we, we do need to um, pay attention to it still. <laughs> Um, so, uh, what, what are some things that you would share with the congregation today? There's also an outbreak of COVID at Elder Care slash Mountain View. Elder they Care Mountain View. 15 patients and 11 staff members that have it. Oh, my. All right. All right. Um, I, I mentioned to somebody this morning that one of the things we, we might do <laughs> is return to those masks. Um, when you're going out, when you're in public, uh, when you're around uh, people that you're not normally around, that's something to do. And, and uh, goodness, uh, the hand washing uh, goes a long way as well. Thank you. Excellent. Carol Blake is out of the hospital and is, is home. She's in Georgia, you say? Thank you. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Praise God. Yes, please. Amen. Amen. Just think, the, the, um, the support that uh, Brenda has received is available to you <laughs> uh, because of the association with this congregation, because people are uh, listening to, to the Lord and, and saying, I want to be connected, I want to be involved, um, and uh, we reach out uh, and support one another in our needs. Uh, we can only do that if we know that you have a need. <laughs> yes. Please keep the parents that are sending their babies off to school for the first time for college in your prayers. We've got... We have, uh, we have one of those sitting back there we're going to send off this week, so and I know it's not going to be easy. <laughs> yep, yep. I remember I remember myself going off to school. My, my, my daughter goes to Marshall, so we didn't have to send her away because uh, we, we live close enough. But uh, I remember being dropped off uh, and being the last of three boys to, to, to leave the house. Uh, so yes, uh, remember the, those folks in prayer. Let's come before God in a time of prayer. Um, I'll begin and I'll, I'll offer a, a moment of silence if you would like to, to lift up a, a name or a situation and then uh, I'll lead us in the Lord's Prayer. Almighty God, we do come to you this day, and, and we are grateful for this place, this family, this body of Christ that we call home. Lord, we pray that uh, you would speak to each of us in our hearts, uh, in the, the quiet place that, that you know, that you created, and, and you know best. Uh, Lord, we come today from, from many different backgrounds and, and many different things on our hearts and minds, and and Lord, help us to lay those, uh, those distractions, those things down before you, uh, for you are best able to take care of them, and, and in so doing, taking care of us. We pray that our time uh, here today will, will draw us closer to one another and draw us closer to you, that as we go from this place, we are renewed for another week, and we are open to uh, your leading wherever we go. We list before you the, the different names and situations that uh, are written in our bulletins and, and that we have shared out loud today. Uh, and we give you thanks for your presence, your healing presence, your saving presence. We lift before you the, the people in Hawaii that have uh, lost so much uh, from fires. And we also pray for uh, people who are coming together to, to give relief and assistance where it is needed. Uh, Lord, uh, remind each person that, that they are not alone, uh, that there are people who love them, people who will, will do what they can to help. 
Uh, we thank you, Lord, for, for being associated with those people and for being some of those people. Uh, Lord, uh, open our eyes to where you would lead us uh, in our lives uh, this week, this, this day, uh, and, and help us to, to live our lives giving glory to you. Listen now to the, the prayers that uh, each of us lift before you. love you, Lord, and we join our voices together in the words that Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. There was nowhere else to turn And nowhere else to go My body knew all the pain A body can know When I quietly turned I quietly No one else could hear my cries full of anguish, my cries full of fear. I to you, I quietly turn to you, hope of the
I feel such sweet release. Your love let me live again. Your love set me free. And you turned to me. I'd like to invite you uh, who are able to, to stand for the reading of the gospel. This comes from the 14th chapter of the gospel of Matthew. Listen now for the words of God. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But by this time, the boat, battered by the waves, was far from the land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning, he came walking toward them on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, It is a ghost! And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. Jesus said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened. And beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased. And those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. Father Almighty, may our reflections on thy living word lead us into right and deeper relationship with thee. And, uh, may we re and may we be found to be thy disciples, reaching out to all we encounter with the love of Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. I will get to the, the gospel reading in a minute, but, uh, but I wanted to, to make a little comment on the on the uh, word from Romans, from Paul, um, where especially where, where it ends with how beautiful are the feet of those who, who bring the good news. Does anybody feel like they've got really beautiful feet? Does anybody, you can raise your hands on this one, does anybody feel like they would rather that nobody ever see their feet? <laughs> I've got some pretty ugly toenails, and I, 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 I'm not even going to say, but I might win a contest for, for the, the worst-looking feet. Um, I don't know, and I'm not even going to suggest that we have a contest. But, um, but uh, one of the beautiful uh, things that happens in Scripture, and, and that we don't do very often, is a foot washing. Um, I'm right there with Peter. <laughs> Remember when, when Jesus wanted to wash the feet and Peter said, you're not going to wash my feet? I'm right there. Uh, I don't want anybody else touching my feet. <laughs> I don't want any, anybody else washing my feet. Uh, if, if you're going to wash my feet, I'm going to spend a good day and a half making sure they're good and clean before, before you can, uh, can wash them. Uh, and yet, 
uh, I've, I've participated in, in foot washings a couple times, and, and they're amazing. They're, they're, it's humbling uh, to receive that, that gift that somebody gives to you, um, and, and it, it can be a really beautiful thing. Uh, I uh, led some people, uh, youth and adults, on a, on a retreat one time, and, and there was a foot washing. You know, we had 20 people seated in a room, um, teenagers, adults, everything, um, and, and uh, we, we would wash the feet of the person next to us so that everybody got a chance to have their foot washed and, and everybody had a, a chance to, to wash somebody's feet. And looking around at the, the, the ways people did it, the, the teenagers were, were, were pretty awkward with it. Uh, don't want to do this. The parents... The parents, I watched every parent go back to, to when they had an infant, uh, and, and, and they were so uh, wonderful and careful with, with washing those little feet. And, and it, it made me remember, uh, you know, bathing my daughter when, when she was, was that little. Uh, it's a beautiful thing. It's, it's a, a wonderful thing uh, if, if you can have it done. But... Um, but uh, Paul is not literally talking about uh, winning a beauty contest with, with your toes. <laughs> uh, Paul is talking uh, about uh, the, the joy when uh, somebody arrives with, with good news. You know, in a little while, maybe even already, uh, people are heading to Hawaii with, um, with relief efforts, with, with supplies like flood buckets. Uh, for, for cleaning up with, with supplies like health kits. Um, and and uh, they're going to be organizing teams to, to clean up and, and to rebuild. Uh, and, and it's going to be exciting for, for people living there to, to see these other people that are coming in to, to give help. Um, and and they'll, they're going to say, we're so glad you're here. You've got beautiful feet. <laughs> You've got beautiful feet uh, for, for coming here. Uh, and, and we are so glad you're here. Like I said before, with the United Methodist Committee on Relief, we, are, we, we here <laughs> are a part of that uh, in, the, in the offerings that we give uh, and the special offerings that we give as well. Anyway, uh, this passage, uh, Matthew chapter 14, verses 22 through 33, is, is generally presented as it's, it's about Peter walking on the water, but Peter walking on the water isn't, uh, isn't the point. That's, that's not what this... Nope, yeah, my battery's gone. That's fine. That's fine. Paula warned me about that. Are we good? Are we good? Okay. All right. I'll use my preaching voice. All right. So uh, this this story about the uh, uh, about Peter walking on water is is not really the point of the story. That's not uh, the the main focus. Things are not always as it as they seem. That's what I want to tell you. Things are not always as they seem. When I returned back from my uh, European vacation uh, a week or a week or so ago, I, I walked in through the garage, uh, and there's, uh, there's the garage, and then there's the laundry room, and then there's the kitchen, and, and uh, my, my feet squished in the, uh, in the laundry room on the, on the little carpet that's in there, and, and I thought, oh, we must have had some rain. Um, and I, I asked my neighbor a little bit later on, I said, tell me about the rain that uh, we had over the last two weeks while I was gone. I was thinking, you know what, if the rain comes at a certain angle, uh, maybe that's how this house deals with it, is it, is it ends up there. And, and there was an inch of rain in my, uh, in my rain gauge in the back, so I thought nothing of it. I put a fan on there, I picked the carpet up. Um, and then the next day was Saturday, and, and Saturday I, I mowed the lawn, which I hadn't done in, in two weeks, having, having been gone, and, and I went to take a shower, and I turned the water on and waited for it to get hot, and it didn't get hot. <laughs> and a minute later I thought, that wasn't rainwater, 
on my laundry room floor, that was uh, the, the water heater. <laughs> the water heater had uh, been emptying itself I don't know how long, <laughs> um, but things were not what I anticipated that they were going to be. It wasn't, it wasn't what it seemed. Um, and I am grateful for the folks of this church that, uh, that got together pretty much immediately and, and made sure that uh, we have a, a, a water heater a new water heater in there and and uh, it's working great and uh, I don't have a, a squishy floor anymore uh, so that's good so so really as disciples um, we should get used to Jesus uh, doing things that are unexpected. Uh, we, we ought to be uh, accustomed to uh, a story of Jesus uh, being told or, or happening and, and saying you know what, it, it isn't quite what I thought it was about. Um, it, uh, it isn't what, uh, what, uh, what it seemed it was going to be. Um, and, and we see Jesus going beyond. We see Jesus here being the kind of person who is, is not stopped by, by death, but, but who raises the dead and who brings new life. Uh, in today's reading, Jesus has fed the crowds. Um, and you remember that uh, th uh, the crowds had interrupted him uh, after he had heard about the, the death of John the Baptist. He went up on the mountain to pray and, and the crowds followed him. And he saw the crowds and he was moved uh, with compassion and he healed them, uh, taking away from his, his own time. Now that the crowds have been taught and healed and fed and they've gone away, Jesus finally gets to have his, his grief time, his prayer time, his, his alone time with the Father. And, and he sends the crowds away. He sends the disciples uh, away. Uh, get in the boat. I'll see you on the other side of the lake. And when he's done praying, he walks out to the boat on the lake, <laughs> on the water. And, and it's just astounding to think of that. Um, and I am right there with the disciples uh, saying, uh, I, <laughs> I'm terrified. Uh, what, what's going on? The disciples see him and are overwhelmed with fear. And Jesus calls out to them immediately. Did you notice how often the word immediately shows up here in this passage? Jesus calls out to them immediately. Be encouraged. Take heart. It is I. And, and we have that phrase uh, in Greek, uh, ego emi, I am. And we're reminded of, of the identity that, that God gives to Moses uh, when, he, when Moses says, uh, who shall I say sent me? And, and God tells him, tell him, I am sent you. Uh, I am. And, and we see Jesus saying that here, I am. God is here. God is present. It's me. Don't be afraid. And, and one thing we can take from that is, is that when you're in a storm, sometimes a, a literal storm, but uh, we've, we've had storms. <laughs> we've had storms with, with cancer. Mickey's got a storm going on right now with, uh, with that car accident that uh, is upending her life. When we have storms, <laughs> when, when we have uh, diagnoses and bad news, uh, uh, we are not alone. When we're overwhelmed with fear, can you hear Jesus saying those words to you? Be encouraged. Be encouraged. I am. I am with you. Do not be afraid. When we are in the storms, we are not alone. And Peter replies, Lord, if it's you. We, we've heard those words before. If it's you, if you are the Son of God, <laughs> uh, we, we've heard those words. If you are the Son of God, command these rocks to become bread. If it's you, <laughs> what, what is Peter doubting? <laughs> what is Peter doubting? Is Peter doubting that he can walk on water? <laughs> uh, no. No, the message is not that if, if Peter has enough faith, he could walk on water, but, but rather, if Peter has enough faith... He would believe that uh, Jesus came to him in the boat. He would have believed, uh, as he does two chapters later in chapter 16, he, he would believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the, the Son of God. Uh, we have that hindsight. 
uh, we have that, that training. Jesus is the Messiah, the Christ, the Son of God. And, and clearly it was impossible that he should be walking on the water to come to them. And this is a passage that demonstrates that, that he is who he says he is. Jesus is the Messiah. Jesus is the one who can walk on water. That's not an obstacle for him. Uh, Jesus is the one who the prophets said he would be. Uh, he is the one who is with Almighty God, and he is present, and he is powerful. We often find ourselves overwhelmed uh, like Peter because clearly it's impossible that Jesus could come to us here now. 2023, right? I mean, clearly it's impossible that, that Jesus could be involved in our lives here and now. Uh, and, and that is a lie that the, the evil one wants us to believe. <laughs> uh, the, the evil one wants us to believe that, that God is not present, that God is not powerful, and, and we want to tell the evil one to stick it, right? <laughs> um, because uh, Jesus is here with us as he was with the, the disciples so long ago um, and like the message to Peter was was not that Peter you can walk on water um, the the message to us is not if we have enough faith we can overcome all of our problems in certain ways <laughs> uh, the the message is that God is with us uh, and and that uh, we're not the ones responsible for for over overcoming the the circumstances uh, we, we just hold on to the one who does. We hold on to the one who does. I read in a commentary, faith is not believing, it, faith is not being able to walk on the water. Only God can do that. Faith is daring to believe. Faith is daring to believe in the face of all evidence that God is with us in the boat. Faith is uh, that uh, willingness to believe that, that God is with us, made real by the community of faith. It's so good to have the community of faith uh, as, as the community of faith makes its way through the storm, battered by the waves. God is with us. When the storms of life are raging, God is with us. When the world is tossing me like a ship upon the sea, God is with us. When we're growing old and feeble, God is with us. When we're afraid of storm or battle or destruction or disease, God is with us. When we face temptation, uh, when we face depression, when we face addiction, when we face grief, God is with us. When we feel like we can't be forgiven, when we feel like we are beyond redemption, God is with us. Lord, we believe. Help us in our unbelief. Thanks be to God. Amen. We have a, a new hymn for you. It's number 2208. Um, and uh, two things we want to say about that is the last phrase uh, might bite you. It might bite you. <laughs> The, the rhythm is a little awkward, uh, or, or it just feels different than it should, but um, we'll power through it. We'll power through it. And, and also, uh, anybody who uh, likes the, the Southern Gospel bass, we're looking for you to stand up and shout it out, uh, because there's a good part for it. Good part for it. Good bass
Have I mentioned UMCOR yet? <laughs> uh, I did want to mention that once again because uh, that's one of the ways that we uh, are involved in service, not only in here in, in Jackson County even, but around the world. Uh, where there is need, uh, we have opportunity to, to serve in this way. Um, let's see, what else do we have coming up service-wise? We have, uh, Greta, I'm looking at you. What's happening on Tuesday? No muffins. No muffins on Tuesday. Uh, but we do have a, a food event happening, is that right? Yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. I'm looking at you because I forgot. But uh, Yep. All right, we've got a back to school bash that we're participating in on Tuesday at 3 o'clock. Um, so, so there's that. Uh, this coming Sunday, a week from today, uh, 6.30 in the evening, we'll have a church council meeting, um, and we'll have a staff parish meeting on the 22nd. Um, and also uh, this Wednesday uh, at 11.30 here in this room, uh, we're going to have a communion service for the community. Um, I haven't uh, settled necessarily on 11.30, but, but I do want to have a, a midweek, midday communion service that uh, whoever in Ripley wants to come to, uh, if they're able, can come. So uh, that'll be a weekly thing starting at 11.30 this coming Wednesday. Uh, we have grief support group uh, tomorrow evening, men's Bible study tomorrow evening, and uh, choir rehearsal is coming up uh, in just two more weeks. Uh, and also I've been told that uh, the name tags, uh, if you are in need of a name tag, uh, let Greta Tyler know and, and we can get some more. There's a, a fresh batch of new ones on the, on the board in the back, and they're helpful to this guy. <laughs> so very good. Uh, we uh, say yes to God and we say thank you to God as we give to God our tithes and our offerings. Uh, there are multiple ways of, of giving check or cash in the plate. I even see some rolled coins up here. Um, and there's a, a QR code there uh, that you can give as well. Uh, and as I always say, I am with you uh, in, in giving. Uh, this, is, uh, this is where I uh, say yes and thank you to God as well. Uh, I'd like to invite you now to stand as you are able for the singing of the doxology. Almighty God, all that we have comes from you, and to you we return these gifts, praying that you would receive them and bless them and multiply them and use them for your kingdom. We offer ourselves to you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Once again, a, a quick thank you to the, the Baileys uh, for uh, helping out up there and uh, being flexible, and, and everybody for being flexible as well. Uh, we, uh, we love it when uh, uh, people give their gifts in such a way. Our closing hymn, uh, we'll sing all four verses of Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee, number 89. Oh, 
all grace who has called us to eternal glory in Christ establish you and strengthen you by the power of the Holy Spirit that you may live in grace and peace. Amen. Thank you.